Okay, so I reinitiated the recording. Uh, Alright, speak real quick. Test, test. Oh my god. It's not working. Uh, one sec. Uh, let me reinitiate the call. Okay. Uh, test. 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 Okay. Uh, we're good now. So we're going for the Katarina game, right? Yeah. Okay. I just had it open. Alright, let's see. Oops, uh, this button, which allows me to do... Wait, I can just press Control J and then do the OP.GG right here. Alright. So, Gunblade, uh, I need to see your starting items. That's pretty interesting. Um... Q Max, then E Max, yep. Mastery, yep, I like the bounty hunter, that's that's fine. This is it, everything's basically set. Um, yeah, no, I was gonna say you don't need Green Father's Gift. Yeah, so Katarina's busted fucking champion, dude. Like, yeah, no. you're so dirty, Jesus Christ. You know, my hate for Katarina, like, never stops existing, Jesus the Lord. I know, I remember you uh, saying something, I watched one of your other videos recently. Yeah, it's whatever. It's like free. It's it, it's it's your best ticket to uh, a free low until you get into a certain point. Where at that point, it's not. It's no longer just the champion. It's actually your decision making. So right now, you just abuse the champion for free low. But another champion that gets you free low is uh, Annie. Like all that time at that point afterwards, it's just decision making. So yeah. we're gonna press O. We're gonna line everything up. Everything's lined up. We're gonna lower the sound. Annie, when I play mid, um, I probably played the most games before. Okay, I forgot I reinitiated the recording, so uh, the game's just starting, and then we're gonna limit the fog of war vision. Take ignite, that's fine. So for starting items, I actually think you should build uh, dark seal three pots, and the reason why is because that increases your lane sustain while you lose value. Or sorry, not three pots, refillable pot. While you sacrifice a lot of lane sustain. Um, I mean, sorry, you you sacrifice the the mana portion of the dark seal. Uh, Katarina is a champion that excels off of early snowballing, so killing someone like Jace, which is probably pretty easy because Katarina is Katarina, uh, and you can get, like, you know, picking up some, some Dark Seals. Like, the item is too cost efficient already just upon purchase. And then refillable potion because you run the, you don't run the extended potion mastery and the biscuit, or also known as the biscuit mastery, which allows you to, you know, divert that point into another point, which is the damage thing. So yeah. in doing so, building a refillable pot is like absolutely perfect. Uh, if you end up buying more than three pots, you're wasting refillable pots efficiency. So then you say you you actually waste more money on buy, buying potions than anything else. And then as a result, instead of buying potions, you can also buy control wards instead. So he walks this way, which gives a tell that either a they were invading or b he started here. It's likely that he started here though, but like it's really rare that like. This champion would ever give you a leash because nobody's smart enough to do that. I know. So the laning. I watched, I watched the replay forward. already without Fog of War, and he was just sitting in the river bush there. Okay, that's kind of retarded then, because like he oh, yeah. doing this kind of gives away that you either look to invade, which you know isn't going to happen right now, or uh, he he has it warded, but it it really doesn't matter. It, it's just where he comes from can give away some some information if your jungler chose to start this side. <laughs> Okay, let me switch my recording devices real quick. Okay, so this uh, audio should work. And then I, oh, okay, it looks, it seems like it works with my, my if I disable it. it. It'll fix itself, okay. So, wait, what's going on here? I saw a bad trade right here, okay. Yeah, refillable pot would have been a lot more efficient on you. Uh, yeah. So Jace is gonna tend to he tends to bully you early, but I think you have the ability to rip him off later on. 
Right. Like, just the matchup should be, like, you, you should be fine sitting right here and then, you know, poking with knife, because free CS through knife is the, the best way to stay safe at the same time. Mm-hmm. And that, that was exactly my thought when I was playing this lane, was that he, I mean, he's got his range, so he's just going to poke me down. But I just had to wait for the early spike at level 2 or 3. Try not to use your shunpo for CS. If you have to miss it, you, you drop it, because... Uh, if if a Warwick was right there, because like you notice that you had the blood scent, it's yeah. it's a threat. It exists as a threat. So what you should do is you want to use your escape as an escape, not to, unless you're under tower. Like if you're absolutely under tower, you're fine. But like here, you kind of hop forward into like an aggressive route. If he actually decided to auto attack you or use his W to punish you, you'd actually be in trouble. Right. He didn't, and like an aggressive mid laner or someone that sees an opportunity that you used your escape for that reason like because you did not pick up a knife after so your shampoo would be like you know on cooldown so as a result he could punish you for that by doing an auto w triple auto at, at because you haven't picked up your knife you would probably go up to pick up your knife then hop backwards but you take an excess amount of damage in, in doing so right. uh All right. First of all, Katarina's broken as shit. <laughs> Second, uh, so this is where one point in vampirism could save you. In theory, if you didn't pop your potion there, you probably would have died. Uh, vampirism, however, does save you, and a lot of pros and stuff like that. They just put one point in it, and while it's only like point four, you know, life steal or whatever, it it can again, it, it can save you. Yeah, so put it's just one point, but just put one point on it. And this guy ain't gonna dive you. There's no way he would actually commit to a dive. Please tell me he doesn't commit to a dive. He's retarded if he dies. I mean... What? Okay, that was a really slow range flash. Uh, for you right here, I think you should've just straight up recalled. Uh, whether or not the kill, like, is obtained, it, it shouldn't matter. Because, uh, at, at, for a brief moment, like, you gotta worry about the other side of the map. People are really crazy in this, like, level of play. So, you, can, you can't really expect, like, supports the roam, obviously, but, like, okay. if they do, you'll, you'll get in trouble. I think that, uh, the way you should be playing it is you should cash in your rewards, aka your first blood, or your first blood gold, as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. I see that you're going for Hextech Gunblade, that's completely fine. Uh, if you had Dark Seal here, you, uh, you have the option of starting Dark Seal, or you can go, um boot 4 pot, kind of depends on the lane matchup. Dark Seal mm -hmm. would work because it increases your lane sustain by like a percentage. I believe it increases potion duration by 25%. Yeah. So with that being said, that's basically, with having a refillable pot, that's basically having three pots. Like worth of, worth of, uh, oh, you should have dodged that. When the gate comes out, move to the, well, you want to move, you want to move towards the, like the lower half of the map because he'll shoot it towards the center. If you moved up, you probably would have gotten hit. Right. He shoots it toward. It's like a, an instant giveaway if he shoots. If he puts up a gate, like there's nothing else that he could do. Like if he's is he just gonna gate to gate? The answer is no. Flash. All right. So if you see that up, oh my god, the Katarina thing. So wait, hang on. Oh my, wait. I, yeah. I'm gonna. I have to back. I want to see because you have uh, three pots. You purchased one pot, right? Yeah. Yeah, so that's 50 gold. Like, like the gold that... Because, cause like, you notice that your CS is rather, like, ridiculously low due to the fact that Jace zoned you out, right? You have to be efficient with your gold. You can't constantly afford to buy pots as a result of what I'm telling you. Because you're, you're going to be dropping 50... Every time you use a pot, it's like you burn 50 gold. But every time you burn one of their pots, it's like burning 50 gold. The only problem is, Jace has Corrupting Potion. So as a result of Corrupting Potion, Corrupting Potion means that he doesn't have to refill on pots. So he's already invested 500 in an early game pressure tool. He doesn't use it effectively. It's kind of retarded that he doesn't use it effectively when he's trading with you. Instead, he uses it for defensive sustain rather than aggression. When he could use it for aggression. But, like, the CS di difference means that you should be playing in a very conservative manner rather than, like, aggressive. Because this is, like, this is really good wave clear for you, but, like... Freezing it here gives you a safe zone where he can't wa just walk up freely and CS. You know what I mean? Right. Because if you walk, if you allow him to walk up and freely CS, or if you allow him to like sit right here and CS, like you're zoned out and you can't CS. That's why you're so far behind. But if you keep it under your tower, you open up your lane to being to receiving ganks from your bot lane, your top lane from a teleport, or your jungler. Mm -hmm. And of course, you cannot receive a gank from Warwick, forcing Warwick to gank other lanes, top, bottom, but not diving mid. 
And then as a result of like CSing, like he, he has to jump on you, which is what I mentioned earlier when he can punish you for trying to CS. Right. And then he flashes with your flash. And then it's really predictable because his EQ is off cooldown because he just used it earlier to poke on you. So then the Kamehameha wave. Oh, we're ruining the dramatic moment. Oh. 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 <laughs> You almost had it. You almost had it. So bad at the moment. <laughs> you almost had it though. I was I was gonna pray because like you at least reacted to it, but you almost had it. I had already pulled up my uh, the shop and I saw the gate open up. Oh yeah, I hate that. Like whenever I'm like, all right, time to buy, and then like they shot they shot me, and it's like, all right, well, um, I can mean, I guess uh, well, it's just gonna be like this then. Okay. Yep. So again, I'm already like I just started noticing this earlier today that I have a bad habit of just. Find too many pots instead of just buying refillables. Yeah, so that's already you've already bought three potions, which is basically another refillables uh, worth of gold. Um, the thing is with potions, like when I play mid, no matter what mid I'm playing, I buy at most three pots, no more, because I value control wards over potions, especially if I'm behind or ahead. It doesn't matter, because at that point you really don't need it. Like I, I take the biscuit mastery because I really don't value any other mastery. Um, as a mid laner, like if I go Ori, I don't really need two game, two more, da two percent more damage because I'm gonna be grouped most of the time because that's how Ori works. And right. if I'm like Ori, same thing. You know, most of the time I group, so that's that's where I take my advantages, I guess. But as Katarina, you just tend to kill people solo, uh, so you need the damage output. Plus, there, there's no point in buffing your red buff or buffing your blue buff because you don't value those. Nice. So what you should do is, as soon as you flash and he flash, because it's simultaneous, time it and put ping, ping your flash, ping Jace flash, and just say mm -hmm. fla Jace has no flash, it's equal to my flash. And that's really important because that means that if you have no, if you don't have flash, that means Jason doesn't have flash either. If you can kill him and he doesn't have flash because you know he doesn't have flash, that's an advantage to you. Always take advantages of, of flashless targets. Katarina excels at mobility because she has infinite. For no fucking reason. I know. Stupid fucking champion! I swear to God, <laughs> I hate the champion. Like, though, if like you mess up your combos, you're just shit out of luck. Yeah, but you can still. Oh, I fucked up my combo. Well, e e e e e. Bye. Huh? Yeah, you just kind of hope and pray that it comes. Back you up. fucking dumb minion! I swear to God, you bastard! Target the tower, not Katarina. That's messed up. I can't believe he did that to you. I know it felt bad. Uh, because of that you can't control or drop control wards anymore, you should pay attention to how Warwick started pathing. If he started bot side, you should ward the left side because he's going to come in from your left side most of the time. Dropping the control ward there also allows Zin to come from red side because he's going to do blue first, then come up to red, then gank through mid. So, uh, gank mid through uh, this half of the map. So if you drop a control ward here, that gives him an opportunity to go through river, especially on, again, a flashless target. You let the lane push into you, but so you see that Jace is bottom. You have two options. You may join them. Katarina is really good at roaming, so you should wave clear immediately and then jump and clean this up. Use your double sh double shinpo whatever, and then like wipe the wave out instantly, and then head down to bot lane. Okay, so you have fog of war threat, so you can't just blindly head into bot lane. Warding this is fine. Warding here, uh, you have no wards left. You can save your control ward for left side, or you can just drop it here. You drop it here, which means that on the left side, uh, there's no threat because it's four bot. But I'm just saying, like as of the situation, this is like the best thing you could do. Check Infernal Drake, nobody's actually inside the pit, that'd be crazy. Jace reveals himself, three people are Mia, bot lane, and jungler. Jungler was just extremely low, which means he's probably back at base. Or he's farming his jungle, most likely at base. Uh, well, if you show up here, it's kind of a bad thing, but there's nothing for you to obtain bottom. I think what you should do is you should check this and check the plant. Always clear the plant. Oh, the reason why you want to clear the plant is because, because like... That you can have that the enemy can't. Huh? Is it because that's information that you can have using the plant that now the enemy can't use? That Yeah, that's one thing, but also because then you can clear wards here and then just scout for vision. It's mostly for vision because then if you uh, manage to de detect that a Warwick was waiting here the entire time instead of actually backing the base, and backing the base would be extremely reasonable. This is a kill, by the way. Um, you, <laughs> you scout it down here to check the camps because then that gives information that... Uh, where the jung is the jungler going to do Krugs? And then you can try to assassinate him at Krugs, make a pick. Uh, if not, then you check. Uh, you check. Um, 
raptors you can aim it towards raptors because then you'll check if there's a ward here so you can flank from behind or something in the future or just check this try so that you can see if you can make a gank bot lane most of the time you want to just gank you just want to do it to again deny them the plant and then yes uh, uh aside from preventing them from accessing the plant you give yourself information that oh i can't gank bottom right now right. also another thing you can do is you can just hit the plant and then back the hell up because then they see the plant in the fog of war so they'll be like oh shit somebody's coming down or somebody was just there right because because of the stupid mechanic where you can see it in the fog of war which is like stupid as shit should not yeah, be like yeah. that, but whatever. Thanks, game. Push the right. lane as soon as you kill the guy. I noticed you kind of... Huh? Go ahead. Oh, I noticed you kind of just stood here. Well, because, I mean, the scent always makes me a little nervous, so I'm just kind of letting my cannon get killed out. Kind of just trying to slow the lane up a little bit. Oh, but but he revealed himself here, and then, and then he's like, oh, because then he can't... He he might have a uh, he if you if you check the information he's not six so he can't kill you pre six plus you have a you have your minion to escape to right here so if you push this lane out asap you're you're set. Cause, I also mm -hmm. I forgot I put that ward there I was I was watching that to see which way he went so I could alert bot lane or not. Yeah he also has four he has to also do four autos if he commits to it so if you check information as you as you're pushing the lane you can de decide whether or not to back up so then you have your ward here it dies so then you can easily just push this lane and get the hell out yeah this should be oh he hit six uh is he retarded what the fuck uh yep yeah, oh never mind you don't have a ward i was gonna say you should ward here because then that gives away whether or not he's gonna re come back around to loop around for a gank or he's just gonna bail. And he looks like he bailed. My god, he's retarded. Jesus Christ, dude. <laughs> so then, you, you had no worries that this is really bad for you if Jace actually had teleport, but he doesn't. I'm just saying the reason why is because he gets creeps. So right. it, if it's in tower, he doesn't. And so like the go the kill that you just like slaughtered him with, he still makes up for it by obtaining a CS advantage over you. And then he denies you six creeps if you don't get to this in time. That's actually pretty important. Like he kind of made up for it because like, because like denying creeps is just as important as taking the creeps, you know? Because like you take the creeps and you deny him creeps, which means that your goal difference is like twice as big. But because of this, it's only like half as big as it should be. And Katarina thrives off of having items and money, so like you know, because she's a stupid champion and stuff like that. Right. If she gets ahead, she's a lot to deal with. Yeah. So you want to keep that ahead. She's really good at snowballing. As soon as she gets a kill, that's basically a game for like the mid laner and stuff like that. Uh, this is fine. Oh, the fear! Yeah, that's that's perfectly fine. He didn't flash, and if you look at if you look that you have uh you have flash, uh Jace did not flash earlier when he when you killed him, if mm -hmm. I'm not mistaken. So you're you know that he has flash until he he actually uses it. You see that in the fog of war. You should place a ward in there and just back up. Okay, never mind. Just in the bush. Always have both wards. Well, just have like two wards at like one one on each bush, because not a lot of people do like a deep gank where it's like all the way around because they'll tend to get spotted right here. Right. So you can take advantage of that. Plus your Katarina. So as soon as you react to it, you're you're set. And there's the flash we just talked about. Yeah. The thing is, you knew he had flash because right. because it was time with yours, but you flashed first to kill him. And then, as a result, he did not like flash in response to your death. Oh, you went greedy. And I just CS. shouldn't. I got so greedy with that CS. CS, yeah. I know you're behind, but like this is this is why. Yeah, you can't you can't like it, it's like the same thing because like if you're behind, you you can't like go aggressive first. You have to take CS when it's free. That wasn't free. Cause if he can hit you, if he can hit you, it's not free. If you can hit him back, it's free. But like at that point, it wasn't like an option because like you have to compare what he has to what you. Oh my God, Nautilus, you're retarded. Okay, first of all, you're building armor against a magic damage dealer, dude. Like, <laughs> I, I had a I had a four AP comp yesterday and a Malfi build Sunfire Cape first. He's actually like retarded, Jesus Christ. Like, I don't understand. I I don't get it. Like, I understand his CS is really high, but that doesn't mean anything if he's dead. Like, like. Okay, Kennen didn't push the. Okay, he did push the lane, and Nautilus didn't teleport. Obviously, because he's dead. He has to TP. He either TP's now or he TP's bottom. I think he should. I think he would TP bottom. Yep, there it is. It's the best bet. It's because it's a counter gank. Kill this. 
Or, or this. No, this right here, right here, right here. What the fuck about that? There, oh my god, got him. Because, like, why would he tunnel on the Warwick over there when there's a free target that's like 2v1 collapse? Jace can't escape because you know he has no flash. And he, right. you know he just gated. Like, this was the most obvious kill. Thank you, Nautilus. And you took it even better. Wait. Not, uh, not going to let Nautilus take that. Huh? Not going to let Nautilus take that. Yeah, no, don't let... You know, you, you either carry them or, like, you live long enough to... You live long enough to carry them or you see yourself getting carried. It's better for you to do the carry. Anyway, yeah. um... What was I was going to say? Oh, yeah, uh... This Amptome is... <laughs> uh, I think that would be a better as a Dark Seal. You also have a lot of pots again. Though it's nitpicky, it's a lot of potions. I think right now, but uh, by now your potion count has gone from three to like six, two, right. four, five, six. Yeah. So yeah, your potion count's gone to six. So six times fi uh, six by fifty is three hundred gold. That's basically a shoe, you know, like another uh, another shoe or three hundred gold towards your hex deck unblade. Yep. I don't know the combined cost of it though. It's like eight hundred, six hundred. Like when you have the two components and you build it together, it's just 300 gold that you could contribute towards it, or another control ward. Right. I think valuing control wards is actually really important um, in this uh, current meta, because denying vision is just as important as it obtaining vision. But a ward that could do both is actually insane. Right. Man, 80 carry in 2017 must feel nice. You know, getting fucking bot laners, like like five people bot lane, that's really fun, yeah, dude. Down there. Yeah, that's actually how you're gonna carry games, by the way. Just just feed bot, just just uh, kill bot lane like over and over and over again. Cause then, cause then like they're more prone to they're they're easily prone to tilting because they they're just so fragile. And Katarina always punishes that. She's also really right. mobile. Like at six, you could just freely kill bot lane like every single time. Even though you got bullied in the lane early, I think you should take advantage of the fact that we're we have this meme of meme in existence. Now Katarina is a champion in the mid to late game that has a lot of patience involved. So your threats are JC, uh, JC, Alistair knockback, Alistair knock up, cannon stun, and Warwick ult. Uh, if you see that Jace has used his knockback and like you know you know what I mean like if if people just aren't visible and you think you can get a kill, just just take advantage of that. Like if it's just if it's just bot lane, just see. Wait, wait till uh, Alistair combos, then do your, then do your full combo and shit like that. Uh, or you can th bait him out by walking forward and pretending to look like you do your full combo, but then don't full combo until he releases his load of WQ and then respond with a combo, or your ulti, because you don't want to get CC'd. So uh, it's the same thing as if you watch the team fight breakdown of Def's, uh, Def's Ezreal. He waited until all the CC was out, then he unleashed his load. And he, he yeah. carried the team fight because of his patience. But as a marksman in a, like the highest level of play, that shit's hard to do. That's yeah, why it's so it. impressive. So it's the same thing. If you want to improve as Katarina, you have to understand where where your threats are. What your okay? So let's see, there's one, that's two, nice, and he has three. But you you obviously like you can poke him, but that's all you can do right now. Because in response, he either he could be retarded and buff bunk a minion. But you have the threat of Jace that he just showed up. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, I wasn't exactly eager to go into that. Yeah, like that. That's what I mean. That's fine because there's the, like you could potentially take two kills, but you could also just lose it out. So, what what is greater, the two kill, the likelihood of two kills, or the benefit of losing, like you know, getting killed, uh, getting like knocked out? And it's probably gonna be the knockout. Uh oh, you there? Yeah. Can you hear me? Hello. Daniel. Yeah. Hello? Hello? I'm I'm still here, yes. Hello? Yes, I am still here. Let me see. Uh yes, I am still here. Hello? <laughs> Is my mic dead? Did my mic die? It's still triggering. Hello? Hello? Yes, can you hear me? Yep. Okay, my I don't know what happened. All right, so, uh, what did I cut off at? Um, like what time? Or it was me and uh, Sona underneath our turret. Oh, okay. What what? Uh, so I was asking you what 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 is uh what is greater? The chances that you'll get two kills, or the chances of you being interrupted and losing the, on the two kills? Uh, definitely getting interrupted by something. Yeah, cause Ali or Jace can just stop you. So like. Patience is a patience is virtue. Oh God. I don't want to talk about it. 
Well, I mean, she killed herself because she didn't move to the left, but, like, still. She also has flash now, never mind. Zen, please. Uh, it's okay for you to move up. You have a team uh, grouped in position. It's okay. You just can't... Okay, this is an out-of-position target. Nice. Jump in. Double knock-up? That's actually an opportunity for you. Yep. As soon as Nautilus casts a result, that's what won you guys the fight. You should, uh, okay, so what you would do here is you would only look at side lanes as you're doing this. I know you're really low. Okay, so here's the thing. You were really low and you popped both your pots. Um, with refillable potion again, you could pop your pots, but, like, sometimes if you recall with a pot active, that's a waste of 50 gold yourself. Just, like, just by because, like, you popped it so late, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, just keep an eye out on that. Okay, so Gunblade into Aether Wisp into, uh, Sork Pen. Okay, that's pretty good. You have a lot of damage coming out of you. I think the Zanyas would be pretty appropriate here, simply because you could deny the cannon shit. Or if you get caught out of position by an Alistair combo, you can just immediately respond with uh, a lockdown. I think I end up going... I think it was... was Ludens. Ludens. Yeah. No, no, no. That's, that's, that's an aggressive pushing tool. Watch your side lanes. Uh, in theory, what you should be doing is looking around for side lanes to push, because that's they're going to try to respond to you, and you can either A, pick them off, or B, just farm. Yep. It's it's relatively easy for a player to just like because like uh, in the mid game a lot of your CS goes down like everybody's CS just starts going down because they're just so busy fighting and shit a lot a lot of people farm so as a result you should just be like looking around for side lanes to push because that's that's like free farm that you can just obtain and then you group with them like from out of nowhere and and then like if they already started a fight most of their CC has to be down so you jump in and kill them see Jinx is able to mass uh, mass accumulate a lot of farm down there if she knew how to freeze um she didn't know how to freeze she's just mindlessly pushing right now but if she's not mindlessly pushing you would just like assume uh assume massive pressure Uh, this group bottom is really strange. Were you guys trying to pick off Jinx? I because, think so. because what you should do is instead there's this free limit. Yep. Oh, oh my God! It's fine. It's fine. You got exhausted. Make sure you time that because that's really important. Yeah. I'm sure I... I'm really good about pinging all that stuff in the team chat. Oh yeah, because uh, over... over um, that was a really big lag. Um, over... over um, whatchamacallit... Over, over replay system? I can't. I can't see if you pinged it. But it's really good yeah. that exhaust is down. You, you, the benefits of exhaust being down is that now you, they have no exhaust towards the AD carry. Oh my god, that's so broke. Like you know that fear is actually the stupidest thing like out there. I totally forgot about the fear, but like because I, I just assume it's the old Warwick with the suppression and shit. But like, oh my god, the fear is stupid. I like yeah. your patience play right here. I like that kill right there, and then the fear kind of intercepts you, but that's fine. Pick up your knife right here. You already know how to play Katarina, but I think that you should have picked up your knife ASAP. Oh, oh, oh no! You walk back into it. Oh, but you're Katarina. That's right. You're Katarina. <laughs> no, because I thought you were going to... Because you looked like you were walking away from it. And then you That's didn't. Cool. And that was kind of weird. I, I think I tried to... I was already moving. I was trying to jump in and just close the gap on him before he could even ult. Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, wait, hold up, what, uh, could you repeat that? Wait, wait, I need you to, I, I need you to see that again, because he protobelted in, if I'm not mistaken, I, I think he did, like, he, he, because Kenan bought protobelt, so you yeah. know that he's gonna do that when he comes in, so you have to back up, like, no matter what, like, just because he's there, because then, like, he can kill both of you, in theory, if he actually uses protobelt, let's see. Yeah, he protobelted in, so, the, yeah, you guys are escaped, and then you walked here, but then you walked back yeah. in. Because then, in theory, if he actually knew how to like combo properly with Kennen, also that was kind of retarded of him to flash that way. But uh, he would have he would have like zapped you like one more. But you know, you got him because you're Katarina. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, I I think that you should have walked to the right. Yep. The other thing I'm one thing I'm really bad about on Cat is. 
checking to make sure my uh, gun blade is uh, off cooldown. Yeah, uh, what I think you should do in response to that is instead of doing 1, 2, and 3, try to bind it to a, another button, like a mouse button or something, just so that you get it off quicker. I bind uh, on my way and missing to my mouse button, so I always constantly ping stuff, um, because I like communicating with my team through, via ping. And then um, I also tend to uh, cast uh, cast my spells on T, or my, my items on T, like time at, uh, so I just press it in response to chain, chain with my spells. That's that's what I always put Gumblade on. T. Yeah, it's it's just a, re a quick reaction, uh, a reflex. Um, what I think you should be doing is, like, you notice that your CS count is like, it's like, Orb. it's at this point, it's just decreasing over time. Like, it's going from like 10 CS a minute, like the standard. Let's say it was 10 CS a minute. It's going from like 10 CS a minute to like two. So yeah. you should be. I I understand that like grouping is gonna happen a lot, but you're not. You're you're behind on items in terms of like, cause cause like. It looks like Jason, like, you have a lot of kills, but, like, he he's not that far behind. I, I feel like with 40 more farm, if you got, it, it maybe, let's say, 30, oh, yeah, 40 more farm, you'd be at 107. 40 more farm would be the equivalent of about 2 to 3 kills. So yep. that's an extra 900, so you'd be way farther ahead because, again, Katarina scales on gold. Kills aren't everything, of course, because, like, your team is grouping together as five, as a five-man unit, and their team is just kind of retarded because, like, yep. they're not grouping as a five-man unit. Um, you can take advantage of this if they don't group as a five-man unit. Also, because you have mobility, you should actually be making, you should actually be taking a ton of gold because you're so mobile. Because if you g gank lanes, you should just tax the entire lane and just keep going. But uh, there were not many opportunities for you to push here because you were either dead in lane by Jace or you were shoved into tower. Or the game was 50-50 or you're at base. Hmm? I'm pinging the shit out of Baron right now. Uh, there were two of them dead at least when we took the inhib, which means they have Baron or uh, minions in their base. Uh, it would be an ambitious Baron call. The reason why, okay, so it would be an ambitious Baron call. Uh, the reason why is because if I, if you look at your HP, or not your HP, sorry, uh, Nautilus's HP, this means that Warwick, oops, uh, backspace too far. Another Twenty-five seconds right now. Right. Um, but the thing is, when he respawns, Warwick can run to you faster, That's and true. so he can. And the thing is, you have a tank, but your tank is low. So because Warwick can run to you faster, the Baron is an aggressive call. However, it, it's an aggressive call, and I would love to have done it too. But look at the mana bars from your teammates. Like excluding the fact that they just casted some spells, looking at the mana bars from your teammates, it's kind of rough because Sona. That means that Sona has to like expend all her mana to do the Baron. Therefore, it's a risky Baron. It's not a free Baron, it's risky. Yeah. Like, had even if they had, like, look, like, she just used one QW and she's almost out of mana. She needs to Q while at Baron in order to give you guys damage to d damage the Baron. Uh, while you guys have Mountain Jake and Infernal, it's gonna hurt the Baron more. But Baron is strong at 22, so it's gonna rip yeah. your tank apart, it's gonna cut, it's gonna mess up Zin. it's gonna, um, like, you, you won't be able to tank it for long, Sona can't take it for long. Without mana, it's, it wouldn't be a free Baron. Um, yeah. Unless Nautilus had teleport, because then he could recall back to base, but that would take eight seconds, which is basically you guys all walk out here. He walks over here. He recalls. By the time you get here, he'll teleport back here using this uh, control word that you uh, uh, or somebody placed. I don't know who placed that. I don't remember, but it doesn't matter. He teleports to this control word. You guys walk in here, and you guys do it with a full health tank. However, Baron still does AOE damage to everyone, and you will have no sustain. So it's again it's still a super risky Baron. And by the time all of that happens. Again, uh, Nautilus. I mean, uh, not Nautilus. Warwick can come back and like you know rush towards it. Yeah. So like it's it's a it's a Baron that's really risky, and I would not have done it. And the other reason why is because these side lanes are gonna go backwards in in their favor slowly. Um. So until these lanes get pushed out, which they're gonna build up eventually for a slow push, um, then you guys can consider the free Baron, because if you have someone sent here, your likelihood of Baron will increase. This is greedy by your team as a unit, but escaping would also be kind of tough and at the same time there was no way that baron w would have been taken due to like look see she speeds you guys up because sona this sona you can't really depend on her to not only not sustain you but like speed because she's going to be going ape shit with her spells like right. she's going to cast speed oh let's get the baron really fast then she's out of mana by the time she gets there you know yeah yeah she doesn't run uh she doesn't seem to run uh like there's no like mana re like she does she's not running redemption is what i'm trying to say so no yeah. redemption no mana regen so like she she's already just naturally out of mana for the most part so bad of when i play cat i forget that other people actually have mana 
Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> yeah, okay, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's really important. Remember that when you coordinate your ganks, which I didn't see very many gank opportunities for you to coordinate simply through this one single game. However, if you know you th throw me more games, it would work. But if you if if you coordinate a gank opportunity, if you truly want to rely on your teammates as a as a unit, because that's what you should be doing as a as a team member. Um, you you have to check what kind of mana or how much mana you have. If your teammates have mana to initiate or something like that, you got this. You know. But if the if the Varus is out of mana but he has a lot of HP, he can only sit in auto attack. He's basically a big creep. That's useless. So right there, the reason why the Baron call was off was because nobody had the resources to be able to endure the damage that Baron could dish out to you guys. And while you guys deal fast damage, Varus isn't really fast at DPS. Like he's slow. He needs to use his spells in order to proc his actual damage. He's not like an attack speed carry like Jinx. Um, J Xin Zhao might be fast, however he's squishy. Like, you know this because it's Xin Zhao. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sona has no mana, she'll auto attack, again, big creep. And then Nautilus, he's gonna die. So, it would be the slowest Baron, and it would it would have to take at least 3 or 4 members being dead, and even then it's still really risky because uh, your overall clear speed for Baron is not as fast as theirs. They have a Jinx Jace with Warwick. Yeah. That's, that's like... I think that even if you have Mountain Drake, it's a lot quicker for them to do Baron than you. So, therefore, it's it's a really risky call. Like, extremely risky. Questionable Barons, as people would say. Hmm, questionable Baron. I, I definitely have a tendency to play aggressive. Well, the thing is, there are different times when Baron is called. Had had a, had a there had you guys just had mana, like, had your teammates had mana, I would have called it. Like, I understand the Baron call, but it's just that, like, we have to look at, like, how... How much mana we have because you can't do two man barons with your team as much as you want to and that's the best thing that you could do my god uh the <laughs> best thing you could do is a two man baron like like if you're really fucking fed but like your team can't do a two man baron ever because right. you need to be s5 because like okay xin is varus okay xin is dead all right varus is dead too nautilus is Xinjiao, okay well nautilus can't deal damage and xin is gonna take forever so no uh so it'd be like a three man baron probably and it would still take a really long time <laughs> that was the surrender. Yeah. Um, I think that you should be farming a lot more. In the end of the day, this guy ends up being double your CS, and like, I mean, you guys are like three thousand gold ahead, but like, he, if the game lasted any longer and they were actually like competent with their abilities, then you would be in trouble, just because yeah. they have so much CC to stop you and lock you down. Hence, Zanya is being a really good alternative. When you're mm -hmm. ahead, you should be looking to build a little bit of defense too. I don't know if you know that, but the reason why is because, like, I'll, I'll use Hecarim as an example. You get Trinity Force, and you press E, and you ram the opponents down. You you mm -hmm. literally mow them down. But, as a result, you're really fragile, so you build full tank. So, you outscale your opponents, and then you never die. And you just constantly deal damage because you're fighting all the time. So, with Katarina, because you are so far ahead, after Gunblade, you go Zanyas. And the reason why you go Zanyas is because you 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 put you give yourself a safety net of, of damage. You start coordinating more tower dives because you get untargetable and you have some armor to tank some shots. Um, you also get you also get like you know a decent amount of AP from it, so it's very valuable as an item. And then you know you go you go damage afterwards because damage is damage. But yep. it's the same thing with Lee Sin. You build a warrior enchant into maybe a black cleaver or hex drinker or. Um, uh, dead man's plate because then after building some damage you go tanky because then you just rely on your base damages because your mobility is already high and your da base damages are also really high and your damage output as in general as Katarina is really really high and with gunblade you already managed to pick people off really fast so like why pick people off when you're really fast and uh wait what's the point of picking people off when you're really fa fast uh if you're just super fragile you know like y you might be fast but like being fragile is going to be a problem too yeah, exactly. So that so I would alternate between like just when you're ahead on Katarina, like like you do get the Zanyas, I understand. I see it, I see it, like right here and stuff like that, but I think you should uh opt for Zanyas over Ludens when you're ahead. Otherwise when you're behind you have to deal damage to kill people, but like even then Zanyas is still good when you're behind too, because then you use it as a, a form of defensive stats, like, oh shit, I can heal myself, wait for my or uh stasis myself for cooldowns and stuff like that. Exactly. So that's that's an advantage that you can take. Yep. Um, next is a cipher. Uh, actually, let me see your masters again. Yeah, you're fine. Uh, your runes. Uh, health per level, AP, magic pen. Uh, oh, do people take AD? I could have sworn it's just like a magic pen page with with like scaling. I, I uh, those are the ones I took. Cat lives for the most part. Cat uh, cat life. <laughs> oh, the master tier player that is a Katarina one trick. Got it. Uh, yeah. let's see. <laughs> let's see. Hang on. Hold up. 
Uh, we're gonna do Cat Life is right here. He's got 78 games. Let's check out X Tray. X Tray is Diamond too. All right, that's not worth. Uh, what we're doing is I tend to do this. We're just gonna see like what the best players are. Cat Life. I mean, like if you if since he made it, like it's fine. Um, champion enthusiasts. We're just gonna see like who's challenger with Cat right now. That's a one trick. Okay. Well, I mean, I mean, oh my God. All right. What a dirty player. What a dirty player. All right. Well, Alex, Itch okay. I mean, this is challenger, right? So, I mean, oh, I know this guy. I know him. I know Ab. Oh my God. I'm so sorry, Ab. Jesus Christ. That's really sad. Look at this. Challenger, Diamond 3, Diamond 2, Master, Master versus like a bunch of D1s and Masters. That's fucking retarded. Anyway, Max Q, Max E, Max W. So he runs Magic Pen. And let's see, this is a standard AP page, you know? Like, uh, also, Vampirism, see? A lot of people yeah. tend to run it. I think that this is actually pretty interesting for roams since you're already mobile instead of valuing farm. But, like, mm -hmm. look at his average CS sitting at 184, 185. Like, in the past, in the games that he's been winning or losing, he still has a ton of CS. And that's an advantage that uh, you should be taking for yourself. You know? Yeah. Like, just, just CSing more. Like, the value of CS is just super important. And again, Dark Seal start with Refillable Pot. Like, just, you already increase your uh, potion duration by 25%. So, again, very, very helpful a as a whole. So, just, just with those two items, you, you make, uh, you're, you're very, it's very efficient. Yeah. So, uh, I definitely need to start refillables instead. Refillable with Dark Seal or Boots 4 Pots. Either way, uh, 4 Pots is a really aggressive move because that's that just means that you, you're expecting to be bullied. But Katarina shouldn't be bullied because you're always just moving, you're on the go, you know? Right. I typically take Boots when I'm going to have to be like, especially like against Ari, I take Boots because I know I'm going to be Skill having shots. to Skill shots. Early on. Yep. Lux. Same thing yep. with Lux. Yep. Take advantage uh, of that. That's that's actually really important. Uh, then we're gonna go on to. I went A D marks um, was just because her Q and her E and her alt all scale on A D as well. So I tried right. to mix in some of each to get that to balance AD the damage early. out. Yes, but I think that mo a majority of her of her damage is in fact magic. Yes. Yeah, it is. Yeah, so that's why that's why they run magic pen. Um, Mine was just basically to get that early game, get that lead. Um, Shoot for that level three all in. So he goes. Uh, this is a challenger in Korea, with a Chinese name that kind of triggers me. He has a hundred games in Cat, six hundred LP. That's actually freaking huge. That's the middle of the ladder. Yeah. Magic pen, health per level, a mix of AP and magic resist, but AD reds or AD quints. Again, vampirism. The value of it. See. Every again, every single player take almost every single player should be taking it, and then five here, put it in them there. So da, 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 da. Uh, same thing. And again, they value this over the, the biscuit. I already understand you do that already, but uh, they do take the attack damage route because I guess it's the same mechanic as yours. So you either value magic pen or you value ability power. It's very variant on the player. Um, you can take fresh blood or you can take feast. I think feast is pretty good in terms of sustaining in lane. Because you know, if you get bullied, you can take feast. If you don't, if you don't get bullied, you can take first, bl first blood. But that requires you to auto attack, you know. So mm -hmm. that's that's pretty important. This guy goes crazy with Moby boots. Jesus, that means that he's like he's roaming a lot. It's like a shako right. player or something like that. It's actually pretty important. All right. So yeah, we're just looking around at Katarina players just to see what uh, what they got, you know. Uh, in order to see a bit, have a better understanding of how other people are playing it again vampirism and like um the hell uh leaderboards there it is and then champion enthusiasts and then we're going down to cat arena who the hell are these people caps from fanatic all right i like it cat arena has most played indeed it is oh my god 21 kills all right 493 LP, so like towards the middle and the bottom of Challenger, that's fine. Just get like 15 kills a game or something like that. Okay, that's fine. Uh, let's see. So he doesn't run Vampirism. Retard. All right. Do, 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 do. Uh, so it's basically your page almost. Attack damage, magic resist. But I think like you can set up if you have multiple rune pages. I think you should be setting up two rune pages for the champion simply because it's matchup dependent. Some matchups mm -hmm. you notice that these guys run like magic resist a lot, but then some of them they don't. Probably depending on again I if you an Annie, I'd run Annie and Ari run the magic resist. A lot of magic resist, yeah. 
Oh yeah, taking exhaust is also really critical because like against like an AD matchup like Zed or some shit, if you don't shit on him right away, you can just exhaust him mid combat. This guy goes flat health. Hmm. That is fairly interesting. Caps, what the fuck? Do, 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 do. Most masteries are basically the same. He doesn't value. Okay, why am I looking at EU? That's really bad. All right, NA is greater than EU anyway. Uh, wait, you're not from EU, are you? No, I'm NA. Okay. Okay, I'm at, I'm glad. So then you just look up towards Korea, uh, Korea or NA, and then you already got it. Cat Life is actually pretty good with it too, so it's it's fine to listen to Cat Life's page. But you should also consider like you know Korean challengers or like NA challengers just to see mm -hmm. like because like they're challenger for a reason, you know. Like it's not just their decision making, and, and also the fact that you're abusing the shit out of Cat. But you know, you know. I mean, if she's there, why would you not abuse her? Yeah, exactly. Um, one forty CS again. You could buff that up a lot. Yeah, Some games I mean, the if you if you look at the couple oh. games I played tonight, it was a lot better. Holy, oh my goodness, <laughs> five point one CS a minute. That's damn. All right, let's see, rank solo. This one, right? Yeah, that was pretty. So that good, was yeah. the one I just played before we got on. So yeah. I mean, it was better. It's still not where I want it to be. Yeah, it's just a significant increase in what you have. It see, like this is two hundred at like this is thirty eight. This is thirty nine minutes at two hundred, but this is thirty nine minutes, almost forty minutes, but at one hundred thirty. So your yeah. consistency with the CS is rather strange. Whether or not you're getting bullied, you should be able to try to maximize your farm. If you think of it like scavenging, uh, mm -hmm. you have to obtain every single farm that you can and be really patient with your last hit. Sometimes I hate it too. I understand the feeling of last hitting whenever they get like 1 HP and you're just like, are you fucking serious right now? Minion, yeah. you like fucking stop. Like they start auto attacking, the minions start ripping the shit out of it and then suddenly they just change targets and it's like, yeah. what the hell, dude? And then like, you, you hit it and expecting the, the, the projectile to hit them but then they change targets and then you know, they, 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 they change back to the target and then they la they steal the last hit. It's like, are you fucking serious? Yeah. So it's really, 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 really annoying, but it's fine. So, uh... Okay, you're, like, also a Zyra player. I see that there's a lot of improvement, like, ready to be made. You have three pages, so... Uh, you could just use this one as another cat page and then, like, use this one as your current cat page. It's fine. The runes don't really make too much of a difference in the deep trading uh, levels. However, what makes a difference is how much you're willing to farm, because... Yeah. I should be seeing an, a, a rise in your CS. Yeah. Okay. So, I should be seeing a rise in your CS first, as well as obtaining refillable potions in order to um, what you call it? A, a, a purchase of refillable potions in order to make up for all the po uh, potions that you buy in game. Yeah. Uh, you shouldn't be doing that on Cat in general because she doesn't need it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Dark Seal, really good since you're going to be expecting to get a lot of kills on Cat. So that's that's another thing you can take into consideration. Uh, other than that, you have uh, control words to buy, and uh, I see the refillable pot here, lol. Uh, control wards, and that's pretty much. Oh, uh, wave clearing waves on the sides. I mean, you do it like sometimes here, but like you should be looking for picks too for roams, and then managing your team's resources. Yeah. And that's pretty much all I got for the session. It's just potions are super valuable, but like every time treat it like this. Like you notice if your opponent has corrupting potion, you can't do it. But like if a if a mid laner like Oriana has like two pots. You know, or anyone that starts to bring, just force them to force them to burn their pots as soon as possible. Force them to trade really negatively and, and lose their pots, cause that's 50 gold. And if you have two pots and they have four pots, you know, or they, if you have two pots and you have a, or if you have two pots from a refillable and they have two regular pots, and you keep burning their pots, that's 50 gold that they waste every time. So they they become you, like in the sense yeah. that they're burning gold on pots unnecessarily when they could be contributing it towards their item. Hey. Yes. Or a control ward. 14 pots last game. That's ridiculous. That's 700 gold. Let's see. Uh, excluding the... Th you always exclude the first three. So, two, five... The, the, uh, did you sell these? Yeah, see, so you sold these. So, two... Uh, okay, two, five, and then six. This, this was six pots in this game. Yeah. 14 pots? Wait, on this one? The one we just watched. Two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine pots. Yeah. So, so that's four fifty. That's that's contributing towards an amp tome. That's yeah. actually an amp tome right there towards your seeker's arm guard. Yep. Oh man. 
that's actually pretty rough for you because like that's 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 huge like eventually remember these small things add up it's like it's like putting points at piggy bank it adds up yeah and so, it's just trying to grab every little advantage you can throughout the game yeah i don't think you should like normally also if you ever play a mana based mid laner you put five points in here one point in here obviously you can't do that on cat but like again just uh, it's, uh investigating putting in a point in vampirism like if you live with yeah. like a little bit of hp it doesn't it means something you know right so always take advantage of that uh and then i think that's pretty much it that's all i got for this session specifically i appreciate it yeah um, <laughs> said my first message i just started playing in like october mm -hmm. wow that's yeah. actually pretty uh pretty nice that's last season you got silver and then you're you're gonna go up if you the thing is this is only one game so like yeah. I, I can't see macro but the one decision was your baron that was a macro call but like you you didn't see like your entire team as a unit which is also another portion of macro so yep. that's really important like let's say they did do it like you guys probably would have died like for the most part like not because they were not because it was the threat of them, but because Baron would shit on you guys like one v five, one v four potentially. Right. So so that was the threat because Baron counts as like a big champion too because he's an epic monster. So consider uh, consider that as a problem. Yeah. So, all right. Well, I appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, if you have any like further questions, you can still send them to me. I'll be like glad to answer them. Um, or you know you can uh just message me for a further session down the line maybe a week or two from now to see if you see any improvements or anything just like aside from different itemization or maybe there's a problem with like your your decision making as a as a you know macro and stuff like that right all right yeah definitely yeah. all right then i'll uh i'll talk to you later all right thanks again all right see you man all right thanks for watching this has been elo veggie coaching katarina i will see you guys next time